Hey guys, so I know what kinds of things you want to see. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Hobby here, and I just wanted to give you a quick look at this Marklin Railjet Taurus that I just received. I've been waiting to put this consist together for quite some time, because anytime they come out with Railjet anything, it sells out right away, and it's difficult to get. And since most people just bought them, they're not going to put them out on the used market very quickly. So, you know, that's it's been a constant pain trying to get one of these. I think the only locomotive that's been more difficult for me to get uh, right now is the night jet. Uh, that it's just been impossible to find any of those, and I'm still looking for the locomotive, even though I have a consist. Pico has made a starter set railjet that's been relatively easy to get a hold of, but it's really not very detailed. Things like the grab irons are molded directly into the body, so I took a pass on that one and waited for something more interesting to come out. And what do you know, Marklin finally did. Now, I don't know if this was COVID delayed. I don't know if this is a second run. It seems to me that this actually came out in an earlier catalog around like 2019 or something like that. Actually, thinking about it more, it came out in 2020. That's when it was supposed to come out, but I, I believe it was delayed. And I finally just got this plop down. It's an MFX slash DCC locomotive. Since I run a Marklin controller, it's going to hit on MFX first, and that's great. And, you know, the external quality of it is great. I mean, it's it's Marklin. I think, you know, the Railjet, particularly in this color scheme, has been out so long, everybody's pretty much perfected the external looks of it. If there were any color problems initially, then, of course, those have pretty much been taken care of. And uh, I actually run a Roco Railjet carriage series, but they've just been sitting idle because I haven't, you know, had one of these Railjet Tauruses to work with. But now that I do, I was able to compare them, and you, you just can't tell that one is made by Roco and one is made by Marklin. As I continue to unbox this, you know, again, you know, the externals... Perfect. I mean, I, you know, Marklin, in, in terms of what I see in real life and what Marklin produces, I just don't see any difference. So, I mean, that's wonderful if you like the Railjet paint scheme. But I'd rather go ahead and show this thing to you with sound without talking over it. So I'm going to discuss some of the issues that I have with the electronics of this thing, particularly as it pertains to the sound. I have four other Tauruses, but they don't have the ascending musical notes inverters because they're all the U4 version. So this is actually the first one I'm going to own that has that ascending scale. What I didn't know was that ascending scales did not happen on the U4 version, so I had accidentally, well, not accidentally, I mean, I loaded the ascending scales sound file into those U4s because that's the only one that I found available. In fact, that's all that Lock Sound seems to have to offer, so they don't have one of the newer U4 um, sound files. In other words, the musical note that the inverter was playing was dependent on the actual speed that the Taurus was running. So if it was running fast, it would be all the way up in the notes. But if it was running slow or at kind of a, a midpoint speed, it would stay there at that musical note. Let me see if I can actually find one of those uh, videos I took before I switched the sound file out. Now, if you listen to this Marklin version, the notes will ramp up pretty quickly before it's even started to move. It seems to even out pretty quickly, but I still think that it should be ascending notes a little bit more slowly as it accelerates. Since I don't live in Europe and I can't get down to the station to observe one of these myself, let me include a clip from another channel and you can judge for yourself. Once 
once again, here's the Marklin version for a comparison. One thing I also noticed about this model from Marklin was that it had a pretty severe amount of looping when it was just sitting at idle. I'll put up two examples and uh, once again I'll just let you judge for yourself what you think about it. Alright, to me that amount of looping seems pretty noticeable and kind of severe to be quite honest with you. One thing I don't think you'll be able to notice too well from the videos of this thing running is that the motor is a little bit buzzy. The whole mechanism is a little bit buzzy, but I've noticed that my Marklins are a little bit buzzier than my Picos and Rocos, so I think this is pretty typical of that brand. I've actually noticed that the Siemens logo here that you can see on the front bumper is actually a little bit more prominent on my Rocos, but you know, that's no big deal. I don't know how it looks in real life, so they may have been overemphasizing it in my Rocos. It's all good though. I'm happy to have a Railjet and finally glad to have one of these full consists running. I can't complain about that. There's, there's no doubt that I love watching the Railjet paint scheme run on my layout. If anyone's really interested, I guess I could put one of these right next to a Roco and film the differences and you can see, you know, if, if you'd rather wait for Roco to come out with one. I don't know if Pico's going to come out with one other than their beginner's model set. This was meant to be a pretty quick review, so I'll go ahead and run this model for you now and uh, you can see how you like it. Hey, so I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I'd love to read your comments and respond to them when I can. And hey, you know, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. It helps me to know what kinds of things you like, and uh, it helps encourage me to keep going. So thanks a bunch, and I'll be seeing you later.